Welcome to the next session on lightning talks. We got five presentations, uh, five minutes each. Uh, we will start with Mannheimer Metatons. The stage is yours. Yeah. Uh, hello, uh, everyone. My name is Robert Danziger. And uh, I've never said anything in less than five minutes in my life, but I'll try. Uh, I um, live in Mannheim. And um, I have been involved since 2015, 2016 in humanitarian development cartog uh, cartography. And I'm a member of the Bureau of uh, Kata uh, ONG. Uh, some of you know the organization. I studied here also cartography it, in Heidelberg. Um, besides the project here, besides the project here, uh, I also have a project, uh, development project. This is humanitarian and integration. I have a development project in Ghana. Uh, if you're interested in that, we can talk about it at some other time. Anyway. The project has two goals, promoting integration of new arrivals in uh, Germany and also at the same time providing uh, humanitarian aid. Uh, here you can see pictures of what our mapathons look like, pretty colorful. Um, and um, the, the activity of the project is, is ridiculously simple, the idea. We organize a series of mapathons every four or five weeks and which recent arrivals, migrants, refugees, others, um, uh, immigrants and uh, local residents, they work together in tandem uh, on selected hot, um, miss hot missing maps projects. Uh, the, um, somewhat to my surprise when I proposed this, the local authorities, integration authorities, um, those responsible for, for the schools, language schools have in fact enthusiastically welcomed the project and uh, we've been, and they've given uh, their support. Um, the mapathons are um, more or less uh, always in the afternoon. There are reasons for that. Uh, and we hold them more or less regularly every, as I said, every four to five weeks. You can see, I'm not going to go through all of this, you can see when we started, uh, how many mapathons we've had to date, uh, where we've had them. The mapathons uh, take place with 25, 35 persons, although we do, I do have, I did start smaller mapathons to do more intensive training uh, for, the, for some of the users who've come back. I have this, some of the new arrivals have been taken part 10 times uh, out of 18 mapathons. So uh, there's some support there for developing uh, more skills on the part of the mapathon users. Um, good. Uh, for Time to look at that. You can see our supporters. We have a we received a small financial donation uh, from BASF. Uh, the costs are very, very low because we have free use of IT infrastructure from the local authorities, and uh, for that reason, um, we uh, the, the costs of this project are very low. But it's 100% volunteer. Nobody's paid for anything. Um, what I don't need to tell you here is uh, about um, how the Mapathon helps. Uh, uh, humanitarian uh, efforts. I mean, you all know that. Uh, you wouldn't be here, I don't think, if you didn't have some idea about that. Um, but what I do, we do surveys um, after every mapathon. And uh, as far as the integration aspects are concerned, um, three areas of, of, of interest, of three areas of uh, sort of profile themselves. What the immigrants or what the, the uh, our new arrivals, what they uh, see as valuable. Uh, the first aspect is the integration aspects. Uh, they map in tandem, sometimes on the same computer, sometimes sitting right next to each other. Uh, so there's social contact, there's language practice. These immigrants are almost always in language schools or in, in integration courses at the time. I go and do recruiting in these schools. I present the project and do recruiting there. Um, they value very much getting to know their new environment because they come out of their daily routines. And they come to this mapathon, they meet people from other language schools, uh, they learn about the city, their geographic horizons change a little bit. And I should add, of course, for all participants, both sides, migrants and local residents, that they work together, there's a, I mean, the effect is clear. The deconstruction of stereotypical thinking, subtle prejudices, which, I mean, obviously no Nazis take part in our, uh, uh, in our, but there are people who are positive, but still even subtle prejudices always work themselves in. The second aspect, which, uh, which is valued by the, the participants, uh, mostly immigrant participants, but also the others, uh, is an acquisition of, of skills. Uh, I do want to say, though, that there's a very high level of, uh, of um, education 
uh, for many of the participants, especially the Syrians and Iraqis. We have architects, I have a physicist, a mathematician who comes all the time, um, engineers. Um, but there's a, a knowledge acquisition by many, and so that's valued uh, quite highly geographically, geographic, IT skills, and even an awareness. We talk about uh, career possibilities because they're all seeking to do work eventually uh, here. Finally, um, there's a real value, they see a real value in supporting other people. I mean, many of these uh, migrants have had very difficult his recent histories, but they, have an, uh, they, they really value the, the ability to, to uh, help others, despite their own often, not always, but often difficult situation. To be a part of a worldwide community, open street map, humanitarian activity, and yeah. Uh, if I have one, do I have 90 seconds or I'm finished? Uh, okay, then there was a little video, but I don't think that's, it's 90 seconds. Anyway, if you want to see the video, I can show it to you on my portable. It's a video showing sort of 90 seconds out of the uh, mapathons and reactions of the, um, of the uh, of migrants and the local participants, how they value it. It's in German, so it probably wouldn't have done much help anyway. Anyway, that's it. Thank you. Next presentation will be on road management. Oops. Let's find the correct slides. Uh, yeah. Hello and welcome to this lightning talk. My name is Alexander Dreit. I'm from the LST and I want to show you the, uh, our project Roadworks Management System in Baden-Württemberg called BIS 2.0. Uh, firstly, to the background, uh, to the roads of Baden-Württemberg. Baden-Württemberg has more than 21,000 kilometers length of classified roads of the more than 3,500 kilometer on highways and national roads alone. Each year more than 400 major road constructions happen solely in Baden-Württemberg on the classified road network and hundreds of smaller maintenance works. As they are planned by a decentralized administration of four administrative regions and 44 districts, a common view is required to see when and uh, where road works will take place and which diversion roads need to be kept free of other works. For this proposed, the Landestelle für Straßentechnik is currently developing the road works information system, second edition, BIS 2. It supports planning of road works, uh, avoiding conflicts where possible. BIS 2 supports the planner by estimating the traffic impact uh, of these works and, if possible, finding better suited time slots to perform these works. This is a previous screenshot showing a dialogue to capture planned road construction. I'll give you a few seconds. Uh, to detect conflicts between various roadworks of the different parties, uh, we map all roadworks onto the OSM street network. Then we check if two route segments serving each other as a fallback uh, route don't carry roadworks at the same time. To perform this matching, we initially map, matched uh, the official street database with the OSM street network. Locations where we were not able to match or we greater difference between match road segments occurred, uh, usually flagged data quality issues in mostly of the official database. We use the Rootable OpenStreetMap network to enter diversions during road constructions. In uh, contrast to our official street database, uh, OSM also contains the unclassified road network. The construction planner may either enter a diversion via a few clicks in the map 
or by just choosing predefined official detour routes from OpenStreetMap. To improve the data quality of OpenStreetMap detour routes, uh, which currently is not very good, we published a list of all official detour routes in Baden-Württemberg under the German Data License Zero. Behind the scenes, we are working hard internally to get published a cartographic, uh, a cartographic detour map as well, which currently is still objected due to license issues concerning the background map. The Landestelle für Straßentechnik is looking forward to working together with the OSM community. There are many data sets like classified road network, bridges and tunnels along roads, daily traffic volumes, roadworks, and so on, which we are working on to get published as open data. Uh, even though wheels of administrations grind slowly, oh, pop, pop, pop. sorry. <laughs> so, even though wheels of administrations grind slowly, we are currently reorganizing and there will be an official contact point for the OSM community soon. So, thank you for your interest, your attention, and before all, all your efforts in creating and maintaining OpenStreetMap. We are looking forward to working with you. And if you have any questions, we have out of the booth for information. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next speaker will present public transport stops and comparing them on OpenStreetMap. Hi everybody, my name is Holger Bruch from the Midfire Dezentrale. We are doing multimodal routing, combining carpooling and public transit. And public transit, uh, public transport is interesting. I want to share our insights uh, comparing public transport stop data from official sources, Nahverkehr Baden-Württemberg and uh, OpenStreetMap. So in June, the Nahverkehrsgesellschaft Baden-Württemberg published um, public transport stop data. So these are stop places which correspond to stop areas in OSM level, which are the areas where bus and trains leave and arrive, and keys, which are in fact kind of platform. And well, you wonder, there were some errors in the data, which uh, will be, well, which make diff uh, the, the matching difficult, but um, I have to say, the guys at the Nahverkehrsgesellschaft Baden Württemberg are really responsive. Um, Few time, few weeks after we, we uh, contacted them and, and told them about these issues, already uh, a quarter of them are resolved. So, on the other hand, um, Open Transport, uh, Open Street Map, public transport stops. Um, well, there are different data models in Open Street Map. You know perhaps about it. PTV one, um, for example, bus stops are just indicated by a highway tag equals bus stop, the name, route draft perhaps. And PDV2 is a bit more complicated, so we have a public transport platform. Um, perhaps we have IDs. Um, the highway bus stop should be maintained for compatibility, compatibility reasons, which is not always the case, but should. And then we have um, stop, another node, the, um, the public transport stop position where the bus uh, stops and yeah it's a bit different but uh, well there as well we have uh, some varieties how the public stop uh, the stop data is mapped um, tags are missing sometimes uh, as the name or it's not neither PTV2 nor PTV1 uh, IDs are have typos in them and so on nevertheless um, we tried to match them and what did we match we match the uh, official stop um, for bus for buses we match to the uh, to the platform and for rail bound uh, transports we matched with the stop position and we took into account name resemblance um, the mode resemblance is it bus is a train uh, the key so um, the key number or letter perhaps 
distance, how far away are these candidates, these match candidates, and are perhaps, if given uh, the directions, the next stop equivalent. So these are details how we do this. Um, perhaps can talk about it later. So, well, we are still not perfect. Uh, our matching has many issues. Uh, for example, we are very sensitive to incomplete tagging. Um, so this is here, Technologie Park. There are some nodes with, uh, which have missing tags, and we mismatch them then. Um, and what is difficult for us is we have no stop sequences. We sometimes mismatch uh, left and right hand side of the street, but um, perhaps this will be better if we match with GTFS data. Nevertheless, um, this gives an impression um, about the matching results. We are able to match about half uh, of the official stops in the green ones. A quarter of them we did not match. Um, uh, we could not match, com com completely not match, and the, um, um, the light red ones, uh, there's at least one stop, uh, one platform which we could were able to match. And what were the insights we had? Um, well, authoritative locations, official locations are often inaccurate. We have sometimes more than hundreds meters of uh, difference. Um, they are, they have no validity uh, data provided often, so well, not often, but uh, those stops in our region I checked um, they were neither under construct, uh, were either under, under construction or perhaps uh, like here um, already out of service. Then the name data is not regularly updated apparently. OpenStreetMap is more accurate on this topic we we think and on the other hand, there are some regions in Baden-Württemberg where uh, many stops are still to map, and yeah, the data quality is heterogeneous. And my time is over, so this is the agenda, what we want to do further, and well, perhaps we have questions, we can talk afterwards. Of Geo Chicas, is he or she around? If not, then we'll proceed with uh, the last lightning talk that's called uh, Open Trail View. Hi, so my name's Nick Whitelag. Uh, I did, um, oh, is that presenting properly? I hope so, yeah. Okay, so my name's Nick Whitelag. I did present on HiCar, my AR app yesterday. So here I'm, I'm here today to talk about my other project, Open Trail View. Uh, this is basically a street view for um, footpaths and trails. So it's like Google Street View in terms of what it's aiming to achieve, but it's focused only on footpaths and trails, off-road routes. Uh, it is 100% free and open source, I want to make that clear, and I've given you the GitLab uh, repository URL there. And the interesting thing about it is that uh, the panoramas, which are user-contributed, are auto-connected using OpenStreetMap data. So what I do is I basically contact my server, I get back GeoJSON, and then I use an extremely useful library, an open source library by Pear Leadman, uh, GeoJSON Pathfinder, which I've given you the URL for there, and that will basically calculate the path from one point to another, uh, given basically a network of GeoJSON. So, uh, and the other uh, open source library I've used is Penelum, which basically is a panorama viewer library. So basically, uh, panoramas are auto-connected using the underlying OpenStreetMap ways. Okay. 
Right, so how can you contribute? Well, but you need some sort of device to uh, basically shoot a 360 panorama. Uh, a couple of options here. First of all, the photospheres, which are available on the Google Camera app, which you may well have if you have an Android device. Uh, are a bit time consuming, that's the problem with you uh, capturing a photosphere panorama. But they are quite good quality these days. That's the nice thing about them. They're relatively good quality. You do need about 40 shots, so it does take a couple of minutes to take those 40 shots. But then they are auto-stitched using the Photosphere, basically the Google Camera app. Uh, and the other option is a 360 camera, such as a Ricoh Theta. Uh, I've got one here. Uh, it's actually borrowed off a friend, but also on long-term loan, so to speak. Um, they're quick because you can just take a single shot like that. However, they do have a couple of disadvantages. The quality can be poorer, as you'll see in a minute, and the shooter appears in the panorama. So basically, if you want to avoid yourself appearing and obstructing the view, you've got to hold it up like that. Uh, but I believe some of the newer models of these and some of the other um, models available are higher quality. OK. Uh, so. I do want to do a demo, uh, if I've got time. Um, two, minutes. two minutes, okay, good. Uh, so opentrailview.org uh, is... Uh, damn, go away, Windows. Oh, what's happened? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the URL is opentrailview.org. Um, I'll just quickly log in because there are some panoramas which I haven't authorised yet. Uh, oh, damn. Uh, oh, God, uh, I forgot my password. You what? No, no, it's definitely not that. No, not that. Naive. Uh, damn. Uh, sorry, I forgot to forgot to uh, authorise some panoramas of Heidelberg. Uh, but I'll just show you some in the default location. Okay, so this is uh, uh, sort of near where I live in Southampton in the UK. So you can see there are various panoramas here. So you can navigate from one to the other like that. And then we're at a junction here. You can go one of two routes. Uh, so we'll go that way and so on and so on and so on. Uh, so basically, that's... Uh, what it does. Um, these panoramas were taken with a Rico Theta. Uh, unfortunately, I did forget to authorise the panoramas of Heidelberg, which I took this morning, but I will do that in just a minute. So uh, if you're interested, uh, if you want to check the website in about half an hour, or probably even about 20 minutes, you will see some photos of Heidelberg there. So there's a map mode, and then you can just search for Heidelberg. And top result. Uh, so basically, check again in about 10 minutes, and you'll see various panoramas of Heidelberg, a few around the castle, a few on the bridge, uh, not the Alterbrucker, but the other one, and then a few on the Philosophane Vague. OK, uh, right, I think that's time up, but I'll just... Uh, any questions? I don't know if I've got time for questions, but uh, I'm around in the break, uh, and that's my contact details. Thanks. Okay. Thank you so much for uh, finishing in time. Uh